He has another tshuva, the Chelek Aleph Simen Lamed Hay, which has nothing to do with the sciences, nothing to do with agriculture. But again, it's a tremendous insight into an Adam Gadol. How sometimes even a Mephurish Ahaloch in Shulchan Aruch depends on circumstances. There's a halach in Shulchan Aruch which is especially difficult for Baalei Tshuva or people involved with Baalei Tshuva. And that is that it says Mephurish in Shulchan Aruch that it is also to give bread to someone who's not going to wash on the tilas yadayim. Or, according to many paiskim, who's not going to make a bracha. So that means you have someone comes to your house, he's not a from yid, and you can't be mechabed him. You can't give him something to eat. When Ben-Gurion visited the Chazaynish, they had this Shiloh. Ben-Gurion went to visit the Chazaynish to teach him a thing or two, wanted to explain things to the Chazaynish. So they had the Shiloh. Ben-Gurion came with the derech to put food on the table. So the Chazaynish permitted only to have food on the table before he walks in. They told him not once he comes in to bring something and give it to him. Ben Gurion would not make a bracha. And it was the derech, after all, Israel, you have to remember, was a British colony. You drank tea in the afternoon. So Chazaynish said, have the tea on the table before he comes in. Zakrav Shleim Zalman. What happens when people are dealing with people who are not yet from, but who have an inclination to us from Kite? They come to visit you. They're Oyhave Taira. They have a liking for from Kite. Can you give them something to eat? You're putting a stumbling block in front of them. You can't do it. What should I do? I can't do it. Rabshleim is such a straight, beautiful svara. Shlomo Zalman says the following. He gives an example. He says, let's say you see someone about to drink wine of Arla, which is Asr min Atayra. He's about to drink wine of Arla. And if you go over to him, you can convince him, instead of drinking the bottle of wine, that's Arla wine, you'll give him a different bottle of wine, but it's Yayin Nesach. It's wine which is Asr min Rabban, and it's non-Jewish wine. Are you allowed to change it, to switch that? L'chaira, you're giving him yayin nesach. But we all understand that if you take someone who has no wine and you give him tray for wine, it's l'chaira. But if you take wine, which is awesome in Atayra, and you substitute wine, which is awesome in Rabbanan, you're not giving him a nechsha. You're improving his position. So Rishleim Islam says the same thing. You have a man who has a liking to Frumkai, a liking to Tyra. If you now, you're not going to give him something to eat, he's not going to make a bracha. It's a situation where he won't, if it's a situation where he won't understand. Think, these people are strange. He'll be offended. So what are you doing? You don't want it to be over. I'm not making a bracha. And you're causing him to not have a liking for Frumkai. To not look further into Frumkai. That's with Naivar Lysite Mechshel. And for that reason, he holds that it's Mutter. He holds that it, under those circumstances, it's permissible. If we're doing a book review, I might as well tell you one very amusing exchange. To me, it was amusing. I would say it's almost a lapse. You wouldn't expect. It's an exchange of letters from Rav Shleim Zalman and Rav Meisha. You've got to take out the Igris Meisha and take out the Micha Shleim. A very interesting exchange of letters. The Shaila is, you took the chalent off the stove. And you, let's say it's Lel Shabbos, you'd like to take some chalent, as many people have a custom Friday night. You take the chalent, you take out some chalent, you put it back. Ramesha says, that's okay, as long as the chalent is fully cooked, and as long as when you pick it up off of the blef, you are taking out the chalent with the intention of putting it back, and you hold the pot, you don't put it down, with all the circumstances, you're allowed to put it back. Rav Shem Arbach, 
writes that if you have cholent and it's got chicken bones in the cholent, so you're not allowed to put the cholent back on the fire. Why? Because it's true that the meat is cooked, the beans are cooked, the potatoes are cooked, but the bones are not fully cooked. So being that the bones are not fully cooked, when you put the cholent back, you're over ambition. So someone showed this to Rav Moshe. So Rav Moshe writes Rav Shalom Azam, and he says, what are you talking about? Bones are not food. Bones are bones. No problem with cooking bones. What's a shayla? So Rav Shalom writes back to Rav Moshe, what do you mean? Bones? You know how I cook bones? It's as if they didn't understand each other. There are two letters back and forth from each until it becomes clear. Rav Moshe is talking about the United States where we don't eat chicken bones. Meat bones, we certainly we suck them out, but we don't eat them. Rav Shalom is in Yerushalayim, a poorer area, where people, they eat the chicken bones. For them, the chicken bones are a delicacy. They become soft in the children, and they eat them. There it's a food, and there it's not a food. But it's incredible, the, the COVID they have. Rav Shalom Zalman writes to Rav Moshe, I know what you mean, bones are not, if you say bones are not food, I'll be macabre from you, but we eat bones. And my sister of Shlomo is the same with Derek Kavi. It's a very, very interesting exchange of letters. Shlomo Zalman has a tshuva re- regarding elevators. The tremendous understanding he had. He printed his initial book on electricity when he was a young man, under 30. Reb Chaim Eiser, when he saw his safer on electricity, he wrote, Yotza Or Metziah, and the new light is coming from Tziah. This was in the late 1930s. His tremendous understanding of how an elevator works. One of the major problems in there are different types of elevators. The standard